Welcome, Sasha. So for today, we're going to be covering this lecture on Ahimsa. Ooh. And Ahimsa is one of the five yamas um, on the path to Samadhi. And um, Samadhi is that unconditional state of bliss. So this is a very essential step into achieving this higher state. And I'll first start off by saying what yamas are. A yama is essentially these guidelines um, to help us minimize our desires in the world. And the very first of the yamas is this ahimsa concept that we'll be talking about. And ahimsa uh, is defined as non-violence or non-harm. And um, before we get deeper into um, the ahimsa concept, just to define what violence is. So violence is essentially uh, forcing your will on someone else or even forcing your will onto your own self. Um, so for ahimsa, this concept is about practicing this non-violence, um, not forcing our will onto others or even forcing our will onto ourselves. And when it comes to this concept of ahimsa, we can think about it in uh, numerous different ways of where it can show up. It can show up in our words, how we speak to towards others. It can show up in our actions. Um, but probably the most profound place is going to be within our thoughts. Uh, for the most part, a lot of us think of ourselves as non-violent people. We're not doing negative things to other people, we're not doing negative actions to other people, um, but where the bigger focus of this concept is going to be within our own mind and how we um, think about others and how we think about ourselves. And interesting enough, um, this concept really rang true to me when I first started on uh, pursuing yoga in my life, and so much so, um, I decided to make this jump into changing my diet as at this very first step of being non-violent. So I said, all right, let's become this vegan, no longer harming animals, and I had this uh, righteous feeling about myself because I'm this vegan now. Um, and yes, it was, it was a really good uh, way of approaching this concept to some extent. But what I was noticing is that I started becoming judgmental towards others because they were making that same sort of choice with their diet. Um, and what I would begin to become more aware of um, as I would focus on this principle is that I would hold on to these negative thoughts about friends, family members, strangers, if you had a mistake, and I may even experience this sense of superiority because, well, I'm not doing this, and while they're doing these things that I consider this negative action, um, it would hold within me this, uh, this type of stress. Um, so in itself, by me, uh, becoming a vegan, um, I was kind of doing it in a little bit of the wrong the wrong way. Um, as opposed to doing it for just myself, I was doing it for myself, but then also forcing my will through thoughts onto other people. Um, so where I initially had this right uh, concept in mind, it kind of steered me away. So uh, that's kind of how I was introduced to uh, this first concept of ahimsa and how I've kind of uh, worked it into my life in such a way and been able to evolve with this concept as well. Um, Such was coming in at the perfect time for me, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you making some, well, some changes? I just feel like overall, um, how I've been moving through life, especially in the last few years, 
I've been trying to make a lot of changes just in general um, to put me more on the path of, you know, good energy and all that kind of stuff, right? But in a, in a way, like, I think that a little bit of that has kind of fed my ego mm -hmm. in this sense of, like, oh, well, you know, I live my life this way, and now, like, I, you know, I'm, I'm working so hard with philosophy and all these things, and, like, and I'm getting feedback from people, and people are, like, saying things to me about my energy and how I'm, you know, being received in my classes and whatnot, and a little bit, even though I'm trying really hard for it not to go to my head, I think that it has, in a way, without me even realizing it, and that kind of, like, sense of, like, do so good, you know what I mean? Like, I think a little bit of that has has gone to to that, like, fed that ego and has caused me to be judgmental to others sometimes, or like think that I need to be so incredibly honest that it's actually doing more harm than good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. I don't have to tell everybody everything that doesn't make me dishonest. Just some things are better left unsaid. Like, I was talking to Alex the other day, the other day we had a session, he's like, just because there's something that could be said doesn't mean that it necessarily should be said. And then sometimes by saying it, you can actually cause like an adverse reaction within yourself. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Very good point. Right in the nick of time. <laughs> Um, and I'll also mention, so as I've been doing this training uh, for 300 hours with Alex, one of the things that also opened my eyes up to a, a HIMSA and how we can incorporate it into more of a regular practice is utilizing a HIMSA on the Panchakosha model, on uh, the five sheets, um, these five different aspects of our being. And so um, I always kind of was focusing on HIMSA around really just the physical aspect and the mental aspect, but it goes beyond that. So yes, we can apply uh, ahimsa with the physical sheet, our body, maybe not overexerting ourselves. Maybe it is choices of diet. Um, maybe it is getting more rest. These different things that we can help maintain just overall well-being in our body is how we can look at ahimsa on that first physical uh, amount of my kosha layer. Um, but then we can even look at it from this next layer, pranamaya kosha, the energetic body. And uh, so this is something that was kind of nothing I even considered before this recent training. And the way we can apply this concept on the energetic body is how do we show up into a room? Are we going to be kind of just slouching over, you know, dragging our feet? Um, not really leading with our heart. Um, so we don't even have to, it does not have to be tied to an action. It does not have to be tied to the body. It does not have to be tied to um, a thought, but we can still have this negative approach or a harmful approach just with the energy that we bring into someone else's life um, that ultimately can affect us. Um, so. Moving on from there, um, kind of the more obvious one for me was how it affects that mental layer, um, the mind and kosha. Um, and you know, one of the things that how this shows up in my life on, on the mental level is just not so much the judgmental thoughts of others, which I have those as well, and I've been uh, utilizing the Ahimsa Diary that has been really helpful and kind of um, bringing awareness to when I have these judgmental thoughts to someone else, friends, wife, or whoever it may be. But really it's these, where I've noticed the most is the judgmental and self-critical thoughts about myself. Um, even just preparing for this uh, lecture right now, I was having some of these self-critical thoughts about uh, not worthy enough and all these little things that take you down to this rabbit hole of negativity. And it kind of spirals out of there. But um, really meeting those negative thoughts, not so much with another emotion, but meeting it with a higher level of awareness uh, is how I've been able to kind of move beyond 
uh, some of those uh, mental barriers. Um, so those are two of the sheets that Ahimsa can be applied onto. And the next two, the Dhyana Maya Kosha and the Ananda Maya Kosha, uh, the intellectual body or the wisdom body and the bliss body, uh, because these aspects of our being are already beyond duality, um, it's not as easy to be applied as it is in these first three sheets that I already covered. Um, but there are some little areas that we can think about. Um, the wisdom body or the intellectual body um, and how it can be applied, such as these uh, mental constructs that we have. We've intellectualized that a society or a life is supposed to be a certain way, and if it doesn't work out in that very specific construct that we have in our mind that we've intellectualized and said this is the way it's supposed to be, um, then we can have some of those negative thoughts. Um, so that is where we can maybe move beyond what we have decided as this is how this is supposed to be um, and to see things as they really are. So we move through these layers uh, with truth um, at, the, at the base of it all. And, and I kind of just touched on this, but I, I really like um, the approach of essentially the solution uh, when we have the, the negative self-talk or the negative actions um, is to bring awareness. And the awareness is coming from this higher level. Um, it can kind of minimize the defensiveness that you may have, um, and it just shines a light on what was something that may have been a blind spot to us, um, essentially by going above what um, we felt trapped into because we just didn't see a way out. All we saw was a negative thought, and we didn't see it from the witness perspective, we saw it from the thinking, the thinker's perspective. Um, so, yeah, the solution to much of these um, violence in the mind or the actions is just to bring awareness to it from a higher level, knowing the truth of who we are, um, knowing the self, knowing the essence. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that a little bit further. And the final little uh, part I'll talk about here is how can we apply ahimsa um, in some of these different areas? And I did kind of brush on this already a little bit, but on the, on the physical level, um, really just observing how we move, how our bodies are reacting. Are we approaching someone with more of an aggressive body language? Um, what is our physical demeanor? Are we kicking the floor as we walk? Are we slamming the door uh, with our body, um, with our arms? So these are different ways we can be more mindful and to bring awareness once again into our actions. How we carry ourselves. How we carry ourselves, yeah. Um, in terms of the mental and the emotional level, um, how can we have more empathy? Um, when we feel that negativity in the mind towards someone else, or if we are holding a grudge or resentment, how can we forgive? Um, these are other ways that we can work with ahimsa on that, that mental and emotional level. Um, and on the energetic level, um, things like are we being coercive towards others? Are we trying to manipulate someone um, with our own like agenda. agenda that's used from like, uh, maybe it's not even words so much or actions, but maybe it's like in a passive aggressive manner that we're approaching someone to try to get our point across or to get our way. 
so those are from the physical, the mental, and then even the energetic level, how we can also incorporate ahimsa. So I think I'll leave it there. Um, so thank you for your time today. Thank you. I appreciate the, the knowledge. Like I said, it's, it's always right when you need to hear it, you know? And it was a really good reminder and refresher of things that, you know, if you get wrapped up in your stuff, and then you, you forget. Yeah. So you need reminders. Okay. Well, namaste. Namaste. Thank you.